All right, Jessica, take it away. Thank you, Jefferson, and thank you so much for presenting this webinar to help our exhibitors have a successful WAF Tech. Uh, I know some of them maybe have a little rust they need to walk, uh, knock off since the last WAF Tech that we had. Um, so just so all of the exhibitors know, you can find a recording of this webinar will be posted after the event, um, along with the previous webinars that have been part of this Exhibitor Success Series. It is in the Exhibitor Success Resource Center, which you can access through the Exhibitor Toolkit on weftech.org. And you'll find recordings of the most recent webcasts, as well as some from some previous years and some additional tools that Jefferson has up listed on your screen right now. So thank you all for being here and thank you Jefferson for adding some more educational resources for our exhibitor success. Well, thank you, Jessica. And again, uh, you know, it really shows a lot that the effort your organization puts in to help exhibitors, because we all know that trade shows are a really big investment of both financial and human capital. And we know that, you know, with increasing costs and more pressure to justify the spend, um, that by continuing to learn and sharpen our skills, uh, we can do a much better job and get a whole lot more value. And as Jessica said, this Exhibitor Success Resource Center has over $10,000 of proven effective uh, trade show productivity. There's downloadable tools. There's a planning and a management tool. There's a budgeting and cost control tool. And there's a measurement tool. So if you have not downloaded on step one on the screen, those three tools, please go grab those. Uh, you, they are completely built. They're Excel spreadsheets. They're completely customizable. Another part of the program is the uh, strategic planning exercises. These are the five critical success areas. And we have PDFs on those. And then we've got articles and webinars. And at any time, you can reach out and ask the trade me and the WEF team for help. So let's get this ball rolling. We got a lot to cover in a short time. Many of you have probably seen me or heard me around. Um, I don't know if I'm excited to admit it, but I have been in the industry now over 30 years, started in 1991. You know, my whole bias, my whole frame is process-based results focused, right? I believe in business, the businesses that not only survive, but grow and dominate their markets are really good on developing processes. And trade shows, there can be a process. In fact, in all my downtime during the pandemic, when I had about a year and a half to uh, take a look back at my 30 year history and look at everything we've done that have helped my clients generate over $800 million in combined results, I was able to organize that into what we call the exhibit marketing process. And that's what we're kind of really touching on throughout these webinars is, the, the, you know, the critical steps of the process. So that's what we're gonna deal with today here. If you ever got questions on trade show productivity, you wanna bounce an idea off me, you wanna talk anything about trade shows, uh, there's my number, there's my email address, always happy. I am here for you to help you win big at shows. So countdown time, we're sitting here, right? Uh, on um, Monday, October 10th, uh, you know, in New Orleans, you know, the doors are going to swing wide open on WEFTEC. Uh, I want you to be absolutely prepared. I want you to have laid a foundation that when you show up, actually, I want you to win the game before kickoff. I want you to have done the things that 80% of exhibitors won't do, right, to make yourself stand out from the crowd, get your share of traffic, get highly qualified, committed next leads, and ultimately look back at WEFTEC 22 and go, what a difference a trade show can make in a company's you know, direction. That's what I want for you. So here's what we're gonna really uh, dive into today on these countdown actions. Number one, uh, the number one reason why most exhibitors struggle to get results from shows is they do not attract enough of the right attendees. So I'm gonna give you some very clear direction on how to get your company and visiting your exhibit in the mind on the agenda of the right people. I want them walking into that exhibit hall with a homing device on them asking, where are you? And they're coming to see you. Number two, uh, this is a time to stand out, take a peek at your exhibit. 
whether you have photographs, whether you've got your E3 report from last year, that would be a really good thing to review, your E3 report. The standout exhibit report, which is on the WEF tech. Actually, we have multiple years of standout exhibit reports. And let's make sure that your exhibit uh, demands attention. Everybody that passes it has to look at it. And let's make sure that it visually answers the three questions that are in the mind of the attendee. And I'll share those in a moment. Number three, this is the window. Take these next four or five weeks here. Take a look at your product or your service. How are you staging it? How are you showing, telling, presenting it? And how can you make sure that that is going to have high impact, right? That it delivers the key messaging you wanna deliver in an impactful way that makes the attendee go, this is awesome, I have gotta know more. That's what we're going for. Number four, you know, you can do all those things right. You can have goals, you can have a great exhibit, you can have a great uh, product presentation, but if your booth staff is not up to the task, it's going to limit the value and the results you get. So we're gonna talk, give you some really good direction on how to get your booth staff ready. And step number five, right? If you're not signing contracts, writing orders, closing deals at the show, and you ever, want to get a return on investment. The real product, the thing that you're going to leave New Orleans with is leads. So we're going to take a look at how do you improve that lead management process so you're not just filling a fishbowl full of business cards to people that want to win a GoPro, but you're getting information rich, high quality, committed next action leads. Now, here's what I would like each of you to do quickly open up your question queue right now i'll give you a moment and i want you to type the numbers one through five of which of these topics for you you feel are the ones that you really got to get a handle on and if you want to just type all type all go ahead and do that now i want your feedback that'll tell me where to spend more time and maybe where to spend a little less time fastest fingers go to your question queue and type right now one through five Megan, thank you. Number five, we are totally going to dive on lead management. Um, Scott says five, two, but he says also all would be important. Uh, Becky, one and five, we're going to take care of you. Uh, we've got you on all this stuff. So thanks for sharing that. You know, I always find for me, right, when I'm attending a webinar, especially a content rich webinar like this, that if I can get my focus on of all these topics, which ones are going to have the most value for me, it'll help me really dial in you know, and laser focus on that topic. And also, when I hit the topic, all of you who submitted and those of you who didn't, you got questions on it far away. What I found now having conducted over 1,200 exhibitor webinars is that the more questions you ask, it seems like the more we all learn from the session. So please do not be shy with your questions today. So let's get this rolling here. Let's tackle number one right now. Get in the mind and get on the agenda of the right attendees. The first major question that you've got to ask here is, who are the right people for you? You see, there are going to be thousands of attendees at WEFTEC, right? But here's the thing, two things, really. Number one, not all those people are the right people for you. So you got to get crystal clear who are the right people for you. And second, you really don't even have the capacity to handle you know, all those people. So you really want to laser it in. If you look at the, the triangle, what I call the CPN triangle, the image on the right, this is a great way to focus in and come to the show with a balanced approach of, you know, that way you start with your customers, right? You should never go into a key trade show like WEFTEC without reaching out and inviting your customers, whether you think they're coming or not, right? Now, why would I say that? Well, this is the time that the competition is knocking very loudly on your customer's door, right? And today's people are using trade shows to revalidate existing buying relationships. They're asking, are you still the best overall source, quality, price, value, service, support, right? So a lot of customers change suppliers as a result of somebody they meet or see at a show. Key idea here, 
circle the wagon around your customers when it comes to trade shows. Now you can see all the different objectives you can set. Relationship management, you know, looking for additional opportunities in the, the account, keeping your ears to the ground for change, who's coming, who's going, what mergers acquisitions, what projects are they really working on over the next six to 12 months. Endorsement, you know, what a great time to get testimonials. Maybe grab your phone, you know, invite your top three customers, ask them why they chose you, how things are working and what they would tell others. So I put that at red, the base of the triangle, because again, always start with your customers. Now, the right side of the triangle, green. This is where the, the quick cash flow is hiding. It's in prospects who are already in your sales pipeline. So talk to your sales managers, your VP of sales. If you sell through dealers, distributors, channel partners, right? Ask them, what prospects do they have in the pipeline? And let's get them to WefTech and let's get them in our booth and let's show, tell, and do something that's going to move us one step closer. One step closer. I'm telling you, quick cash flow is hiding right here. And then that third group is really new contacts, right? These are people that uh, are the right type of uh, facility, the right job function and title, the right responsibilities in the right geographical areas, you know, essentially people that you have no meaningful contact with now. And if you'll come to the show with a balanced approach, you will get maximum value and you'll have a booth full of high value interactions. Okay, here's the second thing. Um, Jessica, uh, just quickly, how many exhibiting companies are we expecting this year? Um, I'm not sure what we're expecting. I know that we are well over 800 right now. I think we would love to be over 900. Uh, we are getting new contracts still uh, at this point. Okay, so here's the thing. I want everybody to lock that in, okay? Eight to 900 exhibiting companies. Do you think that the average attendee visits eight or 900 exhibiting companies? They don't, right? They're very selective about which companies they visit. The key, right, the key to having a booth full of interested, qualified visitors is to deliver value, right? Key phrase here, you may wanna jot this down, it's a good one. Where the value is clear, the decision is easy. Where the value is clear, the decision is easy. So what is really important that every single exhibitor do is they step back, and look at their products and services, and they find the value proposition. Typically, that will come down to what problems in the water treatment plant can you help them address or solve? What opportunities can you help them seize? How to do something better, faster, cheaper, safer, greener, cleaner, right? Less downtime, more uptime. Right? So I want you to gather your product manager, your sales team, your marketing team, and ask yourself. What is our hook? What is the value proposition? Give us five minutes at WEFT. Well, this is how the value prop would look in your marketing message. Struggling with this? Worried about that. Curious about this? Want to learn about this? Insert your, uh, the problem or the opportunity. Give us five minutes at WEFT Tech. You'll see, you'll do, you'll learn, and you'll get. You'll see, you'll do, you'll learn, and you'll get. And that's really put us on your must see, set an appointment with us, you know, use the My Show Planner, whatever it is, get on their agenda, right? Uh, you know, again, I want them walking through the doors at the, er the Ernest Ed Morale Convention Center. I want them walking through the doors going, where are you, right? That's winning the game. But you're gonna have to come up with your value proposition. Out of eight, 900 booths, why should they stop at yours? And that the onus is on you to develop and communicate your value proposition. I suggest landing at least three direct touches. And it works best when you're using multiple marketing media. You're using things like email, uh, social media, maybe mail. It's a good time to get back in the mailbox. You know why? There's hardly any competition in the B2B mailbox. You know where the competition is. It's in the email box. 
the biggest mistake I see exhibitors make in their pre-marketing is they try to run a race with a one-legged horse. You're not going to win that race. <laughs> you know, we need four legs on that horse, right? Uh, so the, use as many channels as you have the time, uh, the budget, and the skill set to manage, right? People ask me, they always ask me, they go, Jefferson, what is the single best media for marketing your booth? And my answer is always the same. There is no single best. The magic is in the mix. The more, the merrier, right? To land those three direct touches. Now, you should be also utilizing Weft Tech Ops. So I, I want to bring Jessica back on for a moment to talk about two free opportunities that you absolutely should be leveraging. Jessica, could you tell us about these ops? Sure. So the first one is Feather. Um, and you should have received an email directly from Feather. If not, please email expoinfo at weft.org so we can send you the information you need. Feather gives you a promo code and some social marketing materials that you can use to invite your customers. If they use the promo code, they can get complimentary access to the exhibit floor. So definitely a great tool to use. Um, and then the other thing is that you do have access to the current attendee list through the registration portal. So if you go through your exhibitor dashboard to your checklist, to your booth personnel registration, which you should be doing anyway, because you do need to register all of your booth personnel, in that portal, you will see a download attendee list button and you can access the attendee list in Excel format. Okay, thanks, Jessica. We got two quick questions regarding these ops. Uh, number one, is Feather, uh, is there a charge or a cost to use Feather? No, there's not. Feather is a free service that's provided to you. Free, it doesn't get any easier than free, right? That's as good right. as it gets. I mean, really, so let's make sure we're using that. That is a digital pre-design. It'll save you a ton of time and money and it'll help you get going. And the other question was with regard to the attendee list, is that a mailing list? And if so, so what information is included with that? Sure, that's a great question. So it is mailing addresses. WEF does not distribute email addresses, but it has mailing addresses along with company, job title. It also includes very important and helpful information um, about focus areas and buying power so that oh. information is included on that list oh oh that's a really good list now uh megan asks um can i download that attendee list more than once like could i go grab it today and then three weeks before showtime could i grab it again absolutely that's one of the benefits of exhibiting at wef is you do have the opportunity you can download that list at any time there's no limit to the number of times you can download it uh, and it yeah, will it, still be available after the show as well through that same portal. Oh, wow. Post show too, huh? You can get to everybody who registered post. Hey, uh, everybody listening, listen really carefully to this. I work with about 50 shows a year and the majority of shows, A, do not even make the list available. And B, if they do, they'll charge anywhere from $500 to $1,000 or more and C, they typically will want to have you do, if it's a mailing list, they'll want to have you do uh, a pre-approved mailer through a bonded mail house. And so this is a really powerful uh, uh, benefit here that I hope every single exhibitor on this webinar goes and grabs. Um, let's see, um, Jessica, Eric has a question. He said, can you uh, restate again how to get the list via the Map Your Show portal? Sure. So from your exhibitor dashboard in Map Your Show, you'll go to your exhibitor checklist. Then you'll go to registration. That registration link for booth personnel registration will automatically sign you in to your registration portal with merits. And it's accessible through that registration portal. If you have trouble, please email expoinfo at weft.org. And Jefferson, I do also want to mention about that attendee list. We do yeah. not sell the list. So the only way to access that attendee list is either to be an exhibitor or to be a sponsor. 
for sponsors, they do have a limited number of polls to be able to obtain that list. Exhibitors are the only ones that have access to have it more than once. Excellent, excellent, thank you. So uh, yeah, hey, keep your questions coming. I see more coming in. I'm gonna move forward so we can get through all of our content, but we will address all of your questions. So keep firing away with your questions. I love seeing the questions. Okay, here's a key thing uh, on your outreach. This is something that a lot of exhibitors overlook. Make sure that in all of your outreach, whether it is print, mail, digital, social media, feather, whatever, that you have a very clear call to action. Do not assume that people will know what you want them to do. You know, if you're gonna use like a landing page, say, hey, click here to go to our landing page you know, to grab this or confirm a time, participate in one of our demos, whatever. But make sure that there's a crystal clear call to action, okay? And then next, um, the highest level of commitment, like when I think about attendees and the commitment I want them to make, the commitment is I want them to commit to visiting with us while they're at WEFTEC. And I think there's two levels of commitment. The first level is what I call the verbal commitment, where the attendee says, yes, I'm coming to WEFTEC, and yes, I'm gonna go see you. I can't really confirm what day or time, but you're on my list. The verbal commitment, that is a really good one. The strongest commitment you can get is what we like to call calendaring, where there is a day and a time, it's on their calendar, and it's on your calendar, right? and you may be able to use some of the resources within the mobile app. If, if not, look into Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-L-Y, -E I hope I spelled that right, Calendly, L-Y. That is a super robust tool that you could have every one of your booth staff set up a series of meeting blocks and take, take away all the back and forth about setting appointments and see how many of those blocks your staff can get filled up before they get to the show. So calendaring. Okay, next, uh, re uh, reward for responding. All right, now listen carefully here, right? I want the value proposition that I deliver to be so strong that the attendee goes, man, I have got to go meet with them, right? But I also want to increase the response rate to my effort. So one of the ways to do that is to offer some form of a reward for either, hey, drop by our booth, we got something cool for you, or maybe even a higher level reward for scheduling appointment. So let's talk reward strategies for a minute here, okay? You know, we're all familiar with the promotional products, right? Here's my five big takeaways on how to select a promotional product that's actually going to pull. Number one, make it unique. I mean, how many more cheap pens does a person really need, right? Number two, make it useful. On top of the desk is better than in the desk. On their keychain is better than in the drawer, right? So make it useful, something they can physically use. Uh, high quality, don't give away junk, they'll link that to your brand. Number four, if you can tie it into a message or a theme, right? That the product that you're using. For example, when I exhibit, I market a service, right? So one of the themes that I've, um, my value proposition was success is measured by the companies you keep. How do you measure up? What do you think my uh, giveaway was? A tape measure with a calculator with a little notepad that not only do they get for responding, but I use it during the interaction to help them run the numbers. So you tie it into a theme. And if you have the ability to personalize it, the response rate, I'm talking 50 to 75% response rate. Now, as far as reward delivery strategies, right? You know, the contest. I mean, you know, if you got nothing else, maybe a contest, but what's the problem with contests? Well, there's probably only going to be one winner. And most people wonder, is the contest even legit, right? So I'm not saying don't use them but I'm saying it's the least effective strategy. Number two, free gift at booth. Give us five minutes at, you'll see, you'll do, you'll learn. Oh, by the way, got something super cool for you at the booth. You wanna really get in their mind before the show? Send it up front. Hey, is our way of saying thanks. Wanted to give you this. Oh, I at least gotta drop by and say thanks to these guys, right? Or gals. 
Uh, here's one of my favorite strategies. Send them half of something. The other half is at the booth. This is what I call the homing device strategy, planting a homing device on them. And I'll give you an example in a moment. So let's talk about some different you know, reward options, right? You know, gift cards, you know, um, maybe it's a Starbucks gift card, right? Maybe, it, maybe it's only a $5 gift card, you know? Maybe it's a bigger gift card. Now, obviously be very sensitive to, uh, you don't wanna get into the threshold where this feels like a bribe, like, hey, come pick up your $1,000 gift card. That's not gonna fly, right? <laughs> it probably would fly, but uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Gift cards, you know, the gift card could be a Visa gift card, a, a Amazon gift card, a Starbucks gift card, you know. Um, another strategy, um, something useful, right? So here's an example of these great little, uh, you know, chargers. I mean, everybody's carrying cell phones and, you know, maybe my phone's old, but that thing, man, I tell you, I can't get through a half a day without it draining its battery. I'm telling you, if you send this to me, I'm showing up at your booth right? Uh, it's plug and play and it fits the different types of devices. Useful with branding. Every time I look at it, you're going to be there. Wearables are super hot. Wearables. I have a lot of clients that'll do like a pedometer challenge and they'll give away these little digital pedometers and say, hey, come by our booth on day one of the show, pick up your uh, pedometer uh, and then come back each day and log in how many steps you logged. Whoever log the highest number of steps over the three days of the show is going to win something at the end of the show now that's a situation where a contest could work but wearables are super hot right now right uh and here you go personalized i've done this with clients when we are hunting c-level executives you know vps high ups we will put together a really good value prop we will mail either by priority mail or fedex a personal letter of invitation with a link to Calendly where they can set an appointment. And we've done this pencil us in for 10 minutes while you're at WefTech to discuss this or that. We will send the box and the pencil up front, but the pen's at the booth. And if you wanna really rock their world, have their name engraved on the pen and pencil, their pen is at your booth. There's a hole in their box creating cognitive dissonance. I've had as high as 75% response rate with this idea. So, hey, some of you on here have probably done some cool stuff in terms of how you've used uh, promotional products. If you would be so kind, any or all of you, to go to your question queue right now and, and type something that you've done before that has worked well uh, in driving and getting traffic to your booth. I would love to hear your results because I know a lot of you have probably done some really good stuff. So I'll take a look at that as we move forward. Let me keep rocking. Time is getting away from me. Let's talk about your exhibit. Okay, job one, they got to see it. If they, if they don't see it, they cannot process it. I think a lot of us assume that everybody that passes our booth looks at it and processes it. They don't. They don't. It's a visually distracting, noisy, bustling environment. So how do you make sure your exhibit draws eyes, right? Well, color, bright colors, right? Lighting, backlighting, lighting your messaging, right? Imagery, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? This one is a combination of all using color, lighting, imagery, and great messaging, right? The physical materials that you're using, you know, be it wood, be it something different than just fabric or you know, the typical exhibit properties. Flooring, flooring can really make a booth pop. You can use flooring creatively. Having unique shapes and angles. Notice how on the image down on the bottom, I wanna make my booth stand out. It's got these color blocks and, and it's angled, right? Unique shapes and angles and motion. You know, the human eye is naturally drawn to things that are moving. So here's a question. How many of these strategies are you using I want you to take a look at your exhibit. You know, where are we at? Today's Thursday, tomorrow, Monday at the latest. And ask yourself, can I improve any or all of these strategies to make sure that my exhibit gets seen, right? Now, let's talk about the questions in the mind of the visitor, okay? I, I have facilitated over 60 panel discussion with actual trade show attendees. And one of the questions I ask them is how do you determine where to place your attention and decide what booths to stop at? And the consistent answer I've heard over these discussions 
is they have three major questions. The first question is, what do you do? If they look at your booth and they cannot tell what you do at a glance, you have work to do. The second one is, why should I care, right? Maybe I'm already using your type of product. And the third one is, who are you? And notice the flow here too, what, why, and who, okay? So let me show you an example here right now of a small booth who nailed all three. What do you do? Air plasma sterilization. Why should I care? I can sterilize my critical instruments. It's safe and easy to operate and it reduces my operating costs. Who are you? Plasma bionics. There you go. That's a clinic on how to answer the three questions, even in a small booth, right? Here's another one, right? The company, right? Uh, with, with safe and reliable, high quality ingredients. Why should I care? They're non-GMO and they're organic. Who is the company? Scholar. Boom, right? Now, if you want to see some incredible examples of left tech exhibits that we have gathered over the years when we do our standout exhibit reports, go to the exhibitor toolkit, the ESRC, click on those reports. There are photographs and there are captions that will help you see in your industry, in your show, great examples of how exhibitors executed exhibits. So go check that out. If you do nothing else here, do that. All right, let's keep rolling. Many of you have AV in the booth, flat panels. Some of you maybe have LED walls. It could be a giant wall or maybe a smaller wall. I'm talking here about the flat panels. Okay, most exhibitors do not leverage their flat panels. Sometimes they're not even turned on. Sometimes if you have like software, there's some image of a software that I have no idea what it is. Many of you run movies or demos, but they're silent movies, right? I don't even know what the movie is. Uh, you know, people don't watch the movie unless they know the title, right? There's no captions, right? Uh, the audio, I can't hear the audio. It's too long, right? It's a seven minute video. They're not gonna watch that, right? And there's really nothing about it that grabs attention. So here's an example of how to leverage a flat panel. This was a show I was at earlier this year. Now, this company markets services, legal services, and they have an attractive booth. It's backlit. The company names surround yourself with the right legal team. To me, that's a bit of a platitude, right? That doesn't, that's not a real value prop. You know, I probably already have a legal team and I probably think I have the right team. So I asked them when I evaluated their booth, I said, hey guys, what are the top situations that would prompt somebody to think about needing legal services? And they said, number one, they are entering into a lease. Number two, they're selling a practice. Number three, they're buying a practice. Number four, they are they have questions about these topics. So on day one of the show, they had this flat panel right there at eye level with a bunch of small copy. It was not drawing attention. They went back to their hotel room. They did a PowerPoint screensaver. They changed colors. They called their audience out. I went back to his booth on the second day of the show. He said he had three times the booth traffic he had on day one. One simple change. He made he turned his flat panel into a call out device that when you walk by this booth, the color yellow caution, red important, blue, right? And a really short and sweet. Enter into a lease, selling, buying, got questions? There you go. So you got flat panels. Let's talk about making those more effective. This was some great direction on how to do that. Okay, now let's talk about your product presentation or demonstration. Remember, there are eight to 900 companies competing for their time and attention. Where the value is clear, the decision is easy, right? Uh, so the number one way that trade show attendees want to interact with an exhibit is some form of a presentation or demonstration. So that I'm asking you, how are you staging? How are you showing? How are you telling? And how are you getting attendees to engage with your product and your messaging? Okay, remember this, they come to learn. If you will teach them something through your demo that's gonna add value to their job or improve their wastewater plant operations, you're gonna be hitting the bullseye in terms of what they wanna know. Remember they come to learn. Uh, the key is multi-sensory. You know, just like I'm going on my webinar here, you, you see things, you hear things, writing things, I'm wanting you to discuss things. Make sure that you have a highly engaging and interactive multi-sensory presentation. 
make sure that you have visual support of your key product messaging. By the way, go to the standout exhibit reports because we have many examples of how WefTech exhibitors are telling their product story visually. Make sure you go and check those out. And make sure you promote your demonstration before. Make coming to immerse and interact and learn, make that your hook, right? Nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to learn. Everybody's got problems, problem, you know, projects and challenges. Promote it before and during. Have signage in the booth. Put it in your exhibitor description. Use Feather to promote your demo, right? Get that mailing list. Narrow it down by a job function or, or area of interest. Promote to those people, okay? Here's a couple examples. I want to give you a couple just really quick, fun examples that can show you how to bring your product story to life in an interactive manner. So this company uh, markets water-soluble labels. They were exhibiting at the National Restaurant Show. One of the restaurateurs' problems is the way they date, track, you know, how long food's been in their coolers is they'll put masking tape and they'll write, like, uh, you know, the date on there. Well, that's kind of messy, right? It's not clean. It's hard to get off. So this company said, how can we show, tell, improve in a fun, immersive way? They had the Dissolve Away Derby. Look at this. They had their labels attached to the wall. They had four where you could shoot the water gun and the person who dissolved their label the fastest won, right? What a fun, cool, memorable, immersive, interactive way. Here's another one from the same show. And I'm going out of your industry because you'll find a lot of stuff on your WefTech standout exhibit reports. But this company, Glassware, what is one of the biggest problems people that restaurants have with glassware? Well, it breaks, right? So what do you think something they would be interested in? Durability. They brought their durability demo to life by having these wine glasses hanging. I think you call that an abacus. I'm not, you know, where you pick up the ball. I'm not sure what you call that thing and it dings. They use the same idea so the person would grab the last glass there, pick it up and let it drop. And you would hear this cling, right? Uh, and they'd go, oh my God, look how tough these. And by the way, that cling was attracting a lot of eyeballs around the booth. So how are you going to show, tell, immerse people in your product experience, your product story? This is show business, people. Let's put on a show. Okay, next. I know I'm firing away. We've got five minutes to go. I got to get through these next topics. Q&A may run a few minutes over. Hope you'll hang with me. If you do need to uh, tune out right at the 45 minute point, please feel free to do so. We are recording this event. It will be uploaded and please complete the post webinar survey. Okay. Best people forward. Write that phrase down. Best people forward. Make sure the people in your booth like working shows. They've got an outgoing personality. They're proactive. They're going to stand up. They're going to smile. They're going to greet people. Make sure they're knowledgeable. Make sure they ask questions before they start talking. Who are they with? Why are they visiting? What do they want to learn? Right? Make sure they have the ability to communicate your product messaging concisely and persuasively. And make sure that they try to get more information than just what's embedded in the badge and that they discuss and get the visitor to agree to what happens next, okay? So here are some quick hitters. Number one, make sure your staff are in your booth, standing, facing the aisle and traffic during all open exhibit hours, right? Number two, half the battle of having your booth filled with visitors is just looking like you want to in a non-aggressive manner. If your staff will stand up a foot and a half off the carpet line in your booth, angle their body posture, look into the aisle and just smile and nod and smile and wave and smile and greet people. You'll be amazed at how many people feel obligated to process your booth. And remember the three questions they'll ask in their own brain. What do you do? Why should I care? Who are you? Okay. Now, when people enter your booth, okay, when they enter your booth, this is the process I've been training for over 20 years. Greet, Welcome, introduce yourself, do not read their name off the badge. I'm Jefferson and you are, and ask an open-ended discovery question. What brings you by? I noticed you were looking at our uh, product demo. Tell me a little about your interest, okay? 
Uh, you should have some questions. You know, what do you do with the plant? Uh, how are you involved with this type of product service? What are some of the problems or frustrations or challenges that you're having, right? Uh, did you come to the show alone uh, or are you here with a group? Make sure you got your questions figured out. Make sure that your product messaging that you can communicate it, CPI, concise, persuasive, interactive, right? Keep it short, but make sure that there is, you're tying it back to a stated need. There is a very clear factor feature. It is linked to an advantage, benefit, or payoff, and there's a feedback question, okay? And here's a big one. One of the biggest mistakes that booth staffers make is going for the badge too quick and not even verifying that there's interest. Hey, we have E3, we're wearing black apparel that says exhibiting effectiveness evaluator. You'd be amazed how many exhibitors run, to, run up to us when we're evaluating our booth and say, can I scan your badge, click go. I'm like, I'm not a lead, right? You, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna not let them, but eh, you know, slow it down here. Don't go for the badge too quick, okay? One of the most important things that your booth staff needs to do before they scan a badge is confirm that there's interest and collaborate what happens next, okay? So some quick hitters on work in the booth. Let's talk about social events, uh, getting more beyond the booth, right? Uh, everything so far is about your booth, but hey, you know, there's a lot going on at a show. You know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And what ha can happen at these social events, there's a chance to really make that human bond before you go for the business bond. And as a general rule, you wanna look at the entire show schedule and ask yourself, where are the events and where are the places that attendees are likely to be really congregating? And let's be there, <laughs> not just our booth, right? So for example, there's an exhibit hall networking reception, which is Tuesday from four to 5 p.m. That'll be happening in the exhibit hall. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure, you know, not only that you're working the booth, but I encourage you to mingle around and flow around, uh, you know, and look for familiar faces. Let's talk about social events, okay? There are really two, two types, right? There's the organized, right? Or there's the informal. If you're in the hotel lobby bar and it's you and one of your team members and two of your customers pop up, that's an informal event. And then there's your events. Maybe you're hosting your own events where you're, you know, getting a restaurant or a bar or a venue and you're inviting a bunch of people. Uh, and there's others events, right? Like the show producers events. If it's your event, please make a note of this. Be a host, not a guest. Make sure you got cards, pen, a notepad. Always good to get to the venue early and scout it out. What's the theme? What are the decoration? What's the type of food are they having? These are all good things, conversation starters. Uh, set a goal to interact with a target number of people per hour. When I go to social events at shows, I personally set a goal of six interactions per hour. If it is a 90 minute event, I put myself on the clock to interact with at least nine people during the show. And, you know, watching for people that are standing alone, you know, maybe they didn't come with a, a group. Go up and introduce yourself, you know, ask a few questions, get to know them. Develop your icebreaker approach. How do you approach people, right? Especially if it's a group, right? Um, ask questions about them. Be interested before being interesting. What do you do? How, you know, um, how long have you been doing it? What do you like most about it? What are some of the biggest frustrations? Why did you get into it? All really good questions that'll get a person talking about themselves. Come up with a very compelling way to answer, what do you do? You know, if you've done a good job on meeting somebody, introducing yourself, building rapport, asking some questions, they're going to flip it around to you and ask you, what do you do? So what I like to do is state a problem. This is what I would do. Someone asked me, Jefferson, what do you do? I say, hey, you know today how exhibitors are spending a lot of money on shows and some of them aren't getting very good results? See how I set the problem in, in my, what do you do? What I do is help them turn their trade show around from an expensive appearance to a productive, profitable investment. So think about that. Could you lead off with a problem and then give a short value prop and also know how to get out of interactions? My favorite way to get out, you know, wind down an interaction is, hey, Jessica, I really enjoyed talking with you here. I do not want to dominate your time at the event. Hey, let's swap cards and let's continue the conversation in the booth. Exit. Okay. 
Last piece. All right, and I'm running a few minutes over. I apologize. I knew I had a lot of content. If ROI is the name of the game, if you're not signing contracts, writing deals, closing you know, orders at the show, and you ever want to get a return on investment, hard dollar cash in the bank ROI, lead management is the playbook. So what really makes a good lead? Information rich, more than what's in the badge, and a clear, committed next action. That is what defines a quality. It's not fishbowls in a business card, right? It's not somebody that you kind of said, hey, can I scan your badge so we can follow up? Those are not leads, right? So it starts with you asking, what information do you need to capture to really understand and value this lead? And then coming up with a series of questions in the natural flow of conversation. And then integrating these questions and these qualifiers into your lead capture device, right? And then, by the way, the lead retrieval, um, make sure that you, are, uh, that you have gone on your exhibitor dashboard, exhibitor checklist, lead retrieval. Look at the lead retrieval system. I think it is critically important for all of us to have electronic lead capture. If you don't have that, someone walks into the booth and hands you a badge to scan, um, um, you know, that's not good, right? Uh, another thing that you want to do with regard to, uh, you know, leads and badges it was when you leave the convention center, a good idea to uh, make sure you take that badge off, right? Uh, that you're not walking around with your badge on. Uh, now, train your booth staff on who the target visitor is, what the problems are, what questions they should be asking, in what order, and how to use the, the device, right? Set lead goals. I'm hey, I'll I will simplify lead goals for you in one statement. Write this down. One qualified lead per hour per staffer. One qualified lead per hour per staffer. And hold them accountable. Have brief end of shift. If you're doing a nine to one and then a one to five shift, check at the end of that 1 p.m. Have a lead captain. Our goal for the show was we captured how much information did we capture? Which of these are really important, high quality leads that we may need to even do follow up during the show with, right? Recognize and reward your top performers. When I do staff training for companies, we always do in booth coaching and we will have a uh, MVP, the most valuable performer of the day. And in our quick recap meeting, which by the way, I recommend all exhibitors do in the booth before you leave, 15 minutes, right? What worked, what didn't, what was our goal, what do we get? recognized top performers. Hey, John was our MVP today. He captured nine, nine qualified leads and he got all four qualifiers captured on all nine leads. John, you're our MVP. Here's tickets to a game. Uh, you know, wherever the show is, you know, there's a casino in Vegas. They're, you know, down there, uh, if that's in your culture, you know, the casino chips for uh, the Harrah's down there, whatever, right? Send flowers home to his or her significant other. Hey, just want to let you know, even though you, you know your your partner's away, um, we appreciate it. And he or she was the most valuable performer in our booth today. You want to blow somebody away? Try that one. Okay, so whew, let me catch my breath. That was a lot of stuff. This is a beginning, not an end, right? I literally came through and gave you like these countdown factors. My promise to you is that if you address these factors, you're gonna win at Weft Tech, right? So what I want you to think about, right? I'm gonna open a question queue here in a minute. I, what I want you to think about is what were the three most important ideas that you picked up here this afternoon and what are you gonna do with them, right? Everybody says knowledge is power. Well, kind of. Uh, knowledge intelligently applied to an outcome, that's power. And that's what we're going for here. So here's your countdown in the month of August. Make sure the rest of this month that you have all these things nailed. Your outcomes are clear, your strategies planned. You've really taken a look at your visitor experience and your booth. You are beginning to promote your participation and your controlling costs. On the Exhibitor Resource Center, there are downloadable tools, topical webinars, and articles. Make sure you go grab, read, watch, do as many of these as you can. In September, all right, September here as we head up to it. Getting on the hit lists, you know, the VIP list, getting your staff ready, tightening up your lead management. Got all these articles up here, right? Download the tools, right? Read the articles, do it.
right? Okay. Whew. Let me catch my breath here, Jessica. I really fired away uh, with a lot of uh, content there. Uh, was there any additional thoughts or any um, anything on behalf of the WEFTEC team you want to share with the exhibitors as we wind down and look at our questions? No, I don't think so. I think that was very thorough, had some great points um, and some great suggestions. Okay, uh, we got a, uh, a question regarding lists. Um, back to the uh, list. Um, um, let me see, Joseph was asking, you know, he downloaded the list and it had a certain number of pre-registered attendees. So he's saying, as I download again closer to um, showtime, will there be more attendees on the list? Yes. In fact, I encourage you to wait as long as possible before the show to download that list. I'm sure Jefferson can probably agree. One of the trends that we're seeing this year, and this has been for all of the WEF conferences, as well as from other people in our industry that we've heard from, is people are waiting until closer and closer to the show to register for the show. So you Absolutely. will definitely see more names on that list the closer we get to WEF Tech. Yeah, that's a really good point, Jessica. And that is absolutely, I think all of us in the industry are surprised at how close now people are waiting to register. Um, there was a show in January, one of my clients, KBiz, Kitchen Bath Industry Show, big um, B2B show. Uh, and Jason over there told me that they picked up 7,000 additional attendees within 10 days of showtime. So attendees are definitely waiting, uh, you know, closer to show time to register for whatever reason. Maybe it was health and safety, maybe it was cost justification, whatever it was. But that's a really good point, Jessica, and that is 100% accurate. And that's happening in every show that I've been part of. And I've already been part of 16 shows this year already. So uh, good point. Um, let me see, Megan mentioned uh, in terms of a promotional product, she uses uh, tote bags with drawstrings on them. I like the bags. My strategy, if I'm gonna give away a bag, I want the biggest, boldest, brightest bag. I actually want my bag to swallow other bags, <laughs> right? They come in a booth with a competitor's bag. I got this bigger one that's colorful and has good messaging on it. Uh, Rebecca shared that she has a virtual reality set uh, that shows how her products work. And thank you for sharing that, Rebecca. Um, and if they do the VR experience, they get a logoed T-shirt. Yeah, that's a great, great strategy. Everybody is fascinated by VR. What a great way to really immerse them in your product story and then give them that reward uh, for participating. So that is all I'm seeing. So here's what I wanna say, the stage is set, right? You're on board, we've got WEFTEC coming up here. October 10th, the doors will swing wide open. Let's, let's take it to the next level. Let's think about all these things I talked about here today. Let's find two or three of those things that you know are gonna make a difference for you and let's get busy and let's put them to work. This is show business. Put on a show, come in and blow our minds, blow attendees' minds. That's what we want. The more all of us as the exhibiting community improve the quality of our exhibits and our experience, the more attendees are gonna to come to show, the longer time they're gonna spend in the exhibit hall and the more results we're all going to get. So thank you so much for logging in today. You really made my day being here. I want to thank Jessica, Veronica, and the team at WEF. Uh, this is a committed team that has your back. They will do anything and everything to help you win, as evidenced by what we're doing here today. And from my team, Jefferson, I want to thank you. We will be at the show. We will be doing our E3 exhibiting uh, effectiveness evaluations. Feel free to reach out to me anytime with questions you have. So this concludes Countdown to WEF Tech Success. Let's make 2022 the year that completely changes the game for how you do shows. Thanks for logging in, and I look forward to seeing you at the show. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everyone.